my particular interest is really about how can we use what I call these technology epoch jumps um, that we see in Africa to do interesting things. And you know, when the slides come up, I'll show a bit about that. But really, it's this concept that we use some of our weaknesses as strengths. So we tend to lag some of the technology developments that occur, particularly if they're infrastructure related. But sometimes that presents us with an opportunity. It means you don't have to deal with like an incumbent legacy infrastructure if you're trying to do something new. Uh, so one of the best examples we've had in recent times is in cell phone type rollout, where we went straight from kind of a GSM network pretty much straight to 4G um, because we didn't, have, we didn't have to deal with a sort of legacy 2G and trying to figure out how to move through it, um, which was interesting. So I started this company, Tzolo, a couple of years back, and our aim really is to become a kind of endemic high-performance computing and storage manufacturing company in Africa because there isn't really one. So typically, if we're going to, yeah, if we're going to do anything uh, on that kind of scale, we either buy it from the cloud providers or we buy it from Dell or IBM. Basically, all that money just disappears offshore. So our goal is to be 70% local content in that high-performance storage and computing space. Uh, challenge to get there. Um, we're trying hard to do so, but uh, yeah. Check this line quick. Go. So one of the areas where we see this technology divide and these, these gaps I'm talking about uh, is data center deployment. So obviously, there's a richness of data centers around the world, but a relative scarcity of them uh, in Africa, as you can see. And so that is going to change, clearly. The, we're not going to live in 20, 30 years' time. There's going to be more data centers in Africa, and they are coming. So we can get ahead of the curve. We can do things now to try and introduce particularly energy efficiency and, and green concerns into that space because we have the opportunity to kind of create the industry from scratch as we go. So we've got kind of two products we're busy working on that, uh, that play in that space. The first of these, and, and you know, none of this is particularly novel technology, but we don't try to be too cutting edge because it's too expensive. What we try and do is use good ideas from around the world, um, dumb them down where they need to be dumbed down to make them easily manufacturable, homegrown, and cost effective. So this is an you know, immersion cooled play. So it's a kind of stainless steel box uh, that you fill with computing of various types. Uh, the one in the picture there, that's uh, there's a Tegra system on chips. So this is a effectively an inferencing box. So for machine learning deployments, it's pretty applicable for that. Uh, we've got some x86 ones. Basically, it's kind of Kubernetes in a box full of oil. Uh, but what's nice about it is it's structural as well. So we are trying to convince people to, instead of building a data center, use these boxes, assemble them together, bolt them up, uh, and get your data center that way. Not only do you get great power usage efficiency, but you don't have to build the data center. And I'll tell you why that's good in another slide. On a similar note, uh, in terms of big storage, having a bunch of spinning disks sitting around is pretty power inefficient. So we're a big believers in tape. I love tape. I'm very old school. Uh, and most people don't like tape. It's slow. It's latency. It's hard to use, blah, 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 blah. So what we're trying to do is put enough software layer in front of tape, make it intelligent enough that it looks pretty much like a standard kind of S3 storage that we'd use. Obviously, there is still latency in it. We can't mask it fully. But this is a way to dramatically reduce your you know, terabyte watts per terabyte. So it's a factor of 10, roughly, between spinning disk and tape in terms of your, your power footprint. It also is much less sensitive to data center type environments. It needs particulate filtering, but not much else. There's really not much power generation that comes through. So gluing these things together, we end up with a lot of savings. Obviously, there's the power efficiency saving itself. So per kilowatt of deployed IT equipment, if your power usage efficiency in the data center is low, you save from that way. But also, the embodied carbon that goes into building a big fancy data center is actually a significant portion uh, of your carbon footprint, even over a 20, 25 year lifespan for a data center. So you know, boxes of oil sitting in the field and our grow tent, so that is a marijuana grow tent, but it works really well for putting tape libraries in it. Um, that kind of deployment works very effectively. As a further incentive to this whole thing, it's not enough, you know, the sort of green message sells well in Africa, but it doesn't sell as well as price. Nothing sells as well as price. So convincing people that this is a solution they should invest in comes down to that cost equation. But the nice thing is we now have this very verifiable carbon sink. Uh, we're not building the data center. We've got good power usage efficiency. We can measure it. We can prove it. It's quite micro scale. So we're working with these guys, Toco, doing effectively a micro carbon exchange. And so if you build one of these data centers, if you use this product set, Effectively, we can reimburse you with uh, green credits on an ongoing basis. And it's 
kind of just emerging in infancy, but we're pretty much there with it. And uh, yeah, I hope we'll see this uh, coming to coming to a data center, maybe not near you, but near us uh, quite soon. And uh, I've got a session on Sunday, I think at 11, uh, talking about this kind of technology. Also, healthcare as well is very amenable to this idea of jumping these uh, technology gaps and uh, making a difference. So, yeah, thanks very much for your time.